Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady. And our first story today about Karen in the lawnmower section. Buying a lawnmower. So the wife and I moved out of a townhouse into a real house, her words. Well, it's time to go buy a mower since we never had to mow the grass at the townhouse. We head to the Orange Home Improvement Store to pick up a Toro 22-inch recycler. I know which model I want, but the wife wants to see the different models in that series. Now I'm wearing an old pair of jeans stained with paint along with a free U.S. Army t-shirt I got for re-enlisting several years ago. My wife is a functioning member of society, so she's fairly well-dressed. I walk along the mower aisle giving the pros and cons of each mower of the Toro line while giving props to why the Hondas cost so much more because they're amazing but expensive. She finally settles on the one I wanted, no electric start but all-wheel drive. Then the line of people who'd been waiting to talk to an employee went crazy asking for help. To caveat this, when I was in high school, I worked at a regional tool store selling mowers and generators, so I had a decent idea of what I'm talking about. What I wasn't ready for was how cool people could be and what a-holes people could be. I've been out of retail for a while. I forgot what it was like. The first two guys to ask for help were Hmong and had limited English skills. We eventually came to the resolution that they wanted to start a landscaping company I pointed them to the middle-tier Hondas or the sale on Cub Cadet mowers, both great machines. Next guy wants a decent mower, point him to the Toro's recycler line. They took second place in Consumer Reports for a reason. Lastly, an older guy wants to know the difference between the mower on my cart and the electric start version. I explained they're the same price, but I've had crap luck when it comes to electric start. They always crap out, give me a pull cord any day. Also, the model I'm buying is all-wheel drive versus the electric start, which was rear-wheel drive. I go to pick up some extra oil and a gas can when I feel the change in temperature. The overhead lights somehow dimmed. I thought, holy Jesus Christ, the eclipse is affecting the electric grid. This harump noise I'd been hearing for the last couple of seconds turned out to be real. My hearing is incredibly crappy. Go Army. The skeletal fingers of death poked me in my back. I spun around to find an elderly lady. Now I'm aware that the Grim Reaper can take any form, so I give a wary, what do you want? She fails to produce a scythe. Instead, she insists that my co-worker give her the mower she wants. I LOL, what? Cue dirty look, and she walks back up the aisle where my saint of a wife had been waiting for me. Apparently, I grabbed the last of the Toro all-wheel drive models in a box, there was still one on display, and her husband, see older guy from above, was so convinced by my explanation of features that they had to have it. I'm like, I don't work here, lady. See what I did there? My wife and I are buying this mower. I get the usual, I'll find your manager threats. I counter with, go find him, I'll wait. Soon as she left the aisle, it was a long sucker, off to the checkout, boom, paid for, and off we go. Unfortunately, I got stopped in the parking lot by a nice lady who needed six bags of concrete loaded into her vehicle, 80 pounds each. She exploited my weakness by using the phrase, please could you help me? So I loaded her car for her. My wife is now laughing hysterically as the manager catches up to me to confront the disrespectful employee. Words are exchanged, lots of cursing between me and the angel of death. Apparently, I stole the last available mower. I show a receipt indicating I purchased the last available boxed mower. Cue old lady shrieking. I yell over that, offer to buy the display at a discount. Manager glares daggers at me. For you non-retail readers, it's not late enough in the season to offer display discounts. Discount on display equals little to no margin on that unit. With the angel of death distracted, I load our truck with our apparently ill-gotten gains and flee. Wife pokes fun at my retail mindset. I pay good money to witness stuff like this. And our second story. Not all heroes wear capes. We have a 24-hour grocery shop in town. This story takes place at around 10 p.m. Sally likes to shop at night because it means less people to deal with. Sally has anxiety and finds it hard to deal with large crowds. As I've changed her name for anonymity, she doesn't mind me telling you this. Despite the anxiety, Sally is amazing at her job. She looks after children, and she does it spectacularly well. 
she wanted me to take this bit out, but it's true, so I won't. Sally's worked with kids for a very long time, and needless to say, some of those kids have grown up and are stepping out into the adult world all on their own. But to Sally, no matter how big they get, they'll always be her kids. So she's doing her nighttime shopping. She picked up the first few items on her list when she turned the corner and there hovering beside the pot noodles is one of her kids. We'll call him Steve. Sally hasn't seen Steve in almost four years. Four years is a long time for a teenager. Steve is definitely not a child anymore. He's around 18 and is stretched out to about seven feet tall. No, nine feet tall. She didn't measure him, but compared to the little boy she last saw four years ago, Steve is now an actual giant and towers over her. But he's still one of her kids. Of course, he remembered her and stopped her to say hello, and they exchanged pleasantries. He tells her he got into the university course he wanted, and she beams with pride. He's a smart boy. They chat for a few moments before Sally heads off. She asked if the giant will do her a favor. Would he please grab the noodles on the top shelf so her five foot four butt didn't need to do the tiptoe dance? Steve, being the total sweetheart that he is, of course obliges. Noodles in hand, she wishes him well and heads off, leaving him to ponder his flavor choices. Sally is in the next aisle over, trying to decide between brand named or generic crisps. Who knows how long she stood there in silent crisp flavor contemplation when her attention was torn from the snacks by a yell. I'll speak to your manager. This is unacceptable. Now, normally, Sally is pretty big on confrontation avoidance. She doesn't handle it well. Anxiety disorders will do that to you. If there's a way to avoid confrontation, by gum, she'll take it. Except when it involves one of her kids. Then the rules change. Under normal circumstances, she'd have taken that screech as her cue to skedaddle. But not today, because that screech had just come from the aisle she had just vacated, the aisle that she had last seen young Steve. You know where this is going. With trepidation and growing sense of dread, Sally creeps around the corner, and of course her worst fears are confirmed. The giant Steve is cowering, cowed before the wrath of the mighty Karen, as she froths at the mouth about whatever slight she's imagined, he's gone from 10 feet tall to 3 feet small. Sally doesn't know what to do. He's one of her kids and he's under attack. Her maternal instincts are at war with her anxiety disorder. He's one of her kids. But what should she do? She doesn't know what to do. Then Steve gets a word in. Four words to be precise. Four words that flick a switch in her brain because these four words have been spoken many times before and now thanks to all the stories she's read, Sally knows exactly what to do. I don't work here, Steve tells the Karen, again as he tries to back away. He's going to get fired. She'll show him, etc., and so on. Sally couldn't give me the exact wording because Sally was not listening to the Karen at this point. She's stealing herself for whatever she's about to do. You've taught her well. Steve clocks her on approach, his eyes wide, begging for help. Well, help us on the way, kiddo, because anxiety or no anxiety, nobody messes with one of Sally's kids. No one. Sally opens her mouth, turns on her playground voice, and as loudly and clearly as possible tells the Karen, I want to speak to your manager. The Karen falters, and she turns her attention to Sally, thus releasing Steve from the laser glare. At this point, the details get a little fuzzy. Sally was running on pure adrenaline and doesn't remember exactly what she said, but it was something along the lines of, that's a horrible way to speak to a customer. You'll get fired for this. Get me your manager. All in her incredible playground voice. While Sally is projecting nonsense at the Karen, Steve flashes her a befuddled look and she makes a little shooing motion. Steve is a smart kid. Steve shoes. The Karen gawks at her, doing a rather convincing impression of a fish while Sally gibbers on about Karen's lack of work ethic or something to that effect. By now, they've attracted the attention of an actual staff member who's hurrying towards them. Poor Sally has reached her threshold for confrontation. She's sure that Steve has had enough time to make his escape. And before the bewildered staff member can reach her, Sally makes her exit, turning swiftly and scurrying away as fast as her little legs will carry her. The Karen doesn't follow. I'd love to tell you that Sally swaggered out of there like the hero she is, but anxiety has a way of taking over. 
Sally dumped her basket by the customer service desk and made a break for it without shopping. Then cowered in her car for a bit before finding the strength to drive herself home. Sally thinks this part of the story makes it less important, but I think Sally is the hero we all need. I'm genuinely in awe of this woman and her courage when it comes to protecting her kids. No, I'm not taking it out because it's true. We're both going shopping together this week. Karen's beware. This time she's bringing back up. That was brilliant. May all Karens have to deal with such heroes. And a little story for a good ending. Woman tries to get me fired because I wouldn't help her in a shop, which isn't where I work. I work at a store which rents out space in a large, different warehouse size store. I was coming back from the bathroom. Woman stops me asking, how are we meant to get these heavy boxes downstairs? I told her, sorry, miss. I don't work here or work in, I work over there. But as a lift right there, you can ask a staff member to help you. I'm sorry to leave you, but my store's a bit busy at the moment. After that, she looked at me aggressively and sarcastically said, thank you. You've been a great help. After that, I went back to my job, felt a little bad, but also thought, sought her. I don't work there. But later, while I'm in the back office doing paperwork, a staff member calls me and tells me a customer would like to speak to me. I walk out. She has a disgusted look on her face of, oh, him. She then turned to the staff member who got me and states, I want you to get me a member of management. The staff member looked at the customer and said, I did. This is the assistant manager. The look on her face was priceless, but didn't end there. Still tried to complain to me and my manager, but no one gave a F and I will never forget the look on her face when she found out I was the assistant manager. Hey guys, thank you all for watching this video to the end and I'll see you on the next one.